Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the inductance and the inductance of the solenoid. So let us take for example, I am taking the n turn coil, let us assume there are n turns which are wound on some core. So because of this, on this let us assume the current I is passing through them. When the current I is passing through them, the current I will return back like this. This is the current. So every conductor is carrying a current of I, each one is carrying a current of I. Let us assume the flux produced by this, we are going to prove in today's class and the coming classes that the flux produced by this because this is called as a solenoid will be like this. So let us assume the flux produced by this one because this you can find by using the right hand rule where if you hold your this solenoid in such a way your curled finger indicates the direction of the current then your thumb indicates the direction of the magnetic field. So your direction of magnetic field will be like this. So magnetic field is coming out from here. So it will be this. So now this magnetic flux whatever is produced this magnetic flux is linking with each of these turns and each turn is carrying a current of I or we can tell we define the term called as the flux linkages. Flux linkages indicates the how much value of the flux that means each flux line is linking with how many turns of the conductor n turns of the conductor and each turn is carrying a current of I or it is linking a total current of the phi into n times so n times of the current. So that's why the flux linkages are given by phi multiplied by n because there are n turns. So now we are going to see in the coming classes in the next chapter that the EMF induced will be given by the Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction which tells that the EMF induced is nothing but minus the rate of change of the flux linkages. The EMF induced will depend on the rate of change of flux linkages. That means instead of steady state current if you give the sinusoidal or the time varying current so that produces the flux that flux links with own coil so that will lead to the production of an EMF which is called as self induced EMF and if it is due to some other coil that means flux produced by some other coil that is called as the mutually induced EMF these things we will discuss in the coming chapter. So here you can just take the formula just assume that this is the formula. So remaining details we are seeing in the next chapter. So this one will be this I can write as minus d psi by di multiplied by di by dt. I have just multiplied and divided with di. So this because this d psi is nothing but n phi. So this I can write as minus d by di of n phi into di by dt. So, this term this that means D of or rate of change of flux linkages per unit current or the flux linkages per unit current this is defined by a term called as self inductance of a coil. So, it is given by the term L where L is called as the inductance of a coil or it is self inductance of a coil which is given by D psi by Di which will be nothing but N into d phi by di in our example. So if let us assume with the variation because when the current is varied linearly let us assume the flux that is produced also varying linearly with respect to change in the current. So then this d phi by di is nothing but the slope of this curve. The slope is equal to constant because this is d phi and this is di the rate of change. So d phi by di I can replace by phi by i because the slope is equal to constant. So this can be written as l this will be n into phi divided by i. So we can write in this form. So we can tell the EMF induced can be written as minus because this entire term this is replaced by L minus L into di by dt. So this is the equation for the EMF induced. So here this negative sign indicates that whatever the EMF is produced will try to oppose the cause. So this negative sign is used for representing the EMF induced in a coil. Let us take for example I am applying some voltage to some coil. Let us assume there is a coil. So some coil is there here. So this is connected. So now when you are you applying the voltage, let us assume this voltage is having positive terminal here, negative terminal here at any instant. The EMF induced will be opposing the cause. That means the EMF induced will have the opposite sign. Or if you are applying the KVL in this loop, if you are applying the KVL in this loop, KVL will be equal to V minus E will be equal to 0 or V will be equal to minus E. So V will be equal to minus e opposite to the value of e because v plus e will be equal to 0. So in a loop, so v will be equal to minus e or the applied voltage will be L into 
diabetes so this also i am going to discuss in detail in basic electrical engineering course there here i am just briefly discussing whatever are relevant to these topics because here my concern is to derive the inductance of different type of elements so now we are also going to see in the coming class that this magnetic field whatever the magnetic field will produce that will be able to store the energy so similar to the energy stored by a capacitor similar is the case the inductor also can store the energy in the form of the magnetic field so that energy we are going to prove that will be equal to half into l into i square so from this also i can calculate my value of l is equal to 2 times of this wm divided by i square so 2 times of the energy stored divided by i square using this also i can calculate my inductance so let us now proceed for inductance of solenoid so inductance of solenoid so before proceed into the solenoid so solenoid i have just discussed solenoid will be something like this there will be a core on this core the conductor will be wound like this so to this the current will be passed so if you are passing the current so current direction i can take it like this if it is wound like this so the direction of the let us see how the flux will be produced and what will be the resultant so if you are taking the cross-sectional view of this so let us take the cross-sectional view of simple solenoid where there is more gap between the edges and turns so this i am taking the cross-sectional view here this i can take the cross-sectional view like this i am just taking for example cross-sectional view of 4 turn coil which are spaced sufficiently so now because the current is going inside as the current is going inside this can be represented by cross so this will be represented by cos and here the current is coming towards us current is coming towards us you can see here it is coming outwards from here so that's why this will be represented by dot so now the direction of the flux produced by this we have already learned before apply your right hand thumb rule where your thumb indicates the direction of the current then your curled finger indicates the direction of magnetic field so if you are taking here the direction of the magnetic field i am going to draw so the direction of the magnetic field first one is the current going inside so the direction of magnetic field will be like this so similar is the case here also it will be like this here also it will be like this and here also it will be like this and at this point if you are taking this you will get your field as like this this is my direction of your field so similar is the case the lower one the current is coming outwards so the direction of the field will be like this so similar is the case the direction of field will be like this so now you can see inside or between two conductors the flux is passing in opposite direction because of this the flux will cancel out or the net flux will be decreased because there is a opposition force whereas when you are taking in the outer side this also flowing in same direction this also flowing in same direction similarly inside also both these are flowing in the same direction so similar is the case the net because of all the conductors so we can tell the net effect of this one so i can represent this what is the actual value of the flux that is passing so i'm taking four conductors for example so the flux direction in the center will be like this so it will be passing like this so how this will pass so it will pass like this in the external field so this is passing like this because in the center the flux is cancelling out so same thing will happen here so same thing will happen here so this will be passing like this and same way some more flux will come this flux will pass like this and some more flux will pass like this this is the direction of the magnetic field produced by this or from this i can conclude that the direction of the magnetic field will be found by applying the right hand thumb rule again where your curled finger indicates the direction of the current that means you hold the solenoid in your hand in such a way your curled finger indicates the direction of the current then your thumb indicates the direction of the magnetic field so you can see the flux lines are coming out from here so this will form as a north pole this will form as a south pole so now i am going for an ideal solenoid so if you are taking the solenoid of very huge length where the length is far far greater than the diameter of your solenoid so let us assume this is my diameter and this is my length of my solenoid so length is far far greater than and the second one the winding is made in such a way the conductors are very near to each other that means the conductors are very near to each other like this so in this way all will be there okay in this case the direction of the field that is produced it is observed that it will come like this 
so this will be the direction of the field and the field lines will pass like this or if it is a tightly wound and having a length much more greater than the diameter it is observed that it will behave something like a permanent magnet that means we can tell that ideal solenoid will behave like a permanent magnet whatever the way the magnetic field comes in the same way the magnetic field will come in the case of its per solenoid also ideal solenoid also i hope it is clear to you so now let us proceed further so now if i want to find what is a resultant value of the flux that is produced by this solenoid because my target is to find the inductance of a solenoid so now for that i am again i am taking the conductors so let us assume the conductors are placed side by side like this and similarly the second side conductors are here these are there so let us assume on the top side it is cross and the bottom side it is dot okay now the direction of the magnetic field produced by this i can found by using right hand rule so this will be my direction of the field this is my value of the h so now i want to find the value of the magnetic field intensity that is produced for finding the magnetic field intensity i can ap apply my ampere circuit law which is equal to integration of h dot dl is equal to the current enclosed because we know the current passing through each conductor is equal to i let us assume total number of turns are equal to n so i am taking a small loop which is called as the amperian loop we know that amperian loop will always be taken in such a way always that whatever surface we are tracking that will be in the left hand side when you are moving in this path so i have taken the amperian path so let us assume that amperian path i am moving from in such a way so this will be my point 1 2 3 and 4 so in this path i am going so when you are going in this path the closed integration of h dot dl will be integration of the first that means 1 to 2 we are moving that will be h dot dl plus integration of the second one second path will be from 2 to 3 we are moving h dot dl plus integration of 3 of this is h dot dl similarly integration of the fourth part this will be h dot dl okay let us assume that length of this complete this one will be equal to l and this width i will take will be equal to a small width delta w which is very small where you can neglect the effect in the side ones so now integration of 1 so 1 we are moving in the direction of the h because we are moving in the direction of h so this will be equal to h multiplied by the length magnetic field intensity at any point multiplied by the total length so that will be h multiplied by well because you are doing the line integration i am assuming h is equal to constant length is equal to l i am moving from 1 to 2 so similarly when i am moving from 2 to 3 i am moving in the perpendicular direction to the magnetic field intensity and in this direction the flux produced is equal to 0 so this becomes equal to 0 plus now moving from 3 to 4 in the outside of your solenoid the flux produced will be equal to 0 outside the solenoid no flux will pass in the ideal solenoid so it will be equal to 0 again and coming from 4 to 1 again from integration from 4 to 1 will be again equal to 0 this will be equal to current enclosed so how much is the current enclosed each conductor is carrying a current of i total n turns are there so this will be equal to n multiplied by I, so from this i can calculate my value of h is equal to n into i divided by l this is what i get so this i can write as this n divided by l i can write as small n multiplied by l where n is the number of turns per unit length number of turns per unit length so now we got the value of the h so let us now calculate the flux linkages flux linkages is equal to n number of turns are there each is linking with a flux of phi where this can be written as n into flux phi is nothing but equal to b multiplied by a so this is b multiplied by a and since we know flux is equal to b multiplied by a that is what i have substituted here so again b can be written as mu into h so this will be equal to this b can be written as mu into h b mu is nothing but mu not into mu r so h into a again h we have obtained from here so i am just substituting n into mu into h is equal to n i divided by l because this h i have expanded multiplied by a so this will become n square mu i by l into a this is what we get from here so now if you want to calculate the inductance inductance is equal to the flux linkages per unit current so flux linkages by current so this will become equal to because current will cancel out so this will become n square this will be mu i am taking out mu n square a 
divided by L. So, this will be in Henry. The inductance is measured in Henry. So, this is the value of inductance of ideal solenoid. Let us take one example so that this concept will be clear to you. So, some of you may be having doubt. So, what will be the inductance before going to the inductance of a solenoid? How to calculate the magnetic field intensity of the practical solenoid? Because we are telling ideal, ideal. What will be the case of practical? This I will derive once I complete the inductance of different type of materials. So, after that I will discuss in detail because I also got the similar doubt we have not covered in previous topics. So, I will teach it in the after completing all these basic things. Okay, now I am proceeding further. So, calculate the inductance of a solenoid of 400 tons wound on a cylindrical tube of 20 centimeters diameter the length of the tube is 100 centimeters and solenoid is wound on air the solenoid is wound on the air only that means it is air wound coil so now i am taking the solution the length is given as 100 centimeters 100 centimeters it will be 100 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 2 meters similar is the case the diameter is given as 20 centimeters this will be 20 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 2 meters and the number of turns n will be equal to 400. So, now we know the inductance L is equal to mu into n square a divided by a because mu here only equal to mu naught because mu r is equal to 1 multiplied by n square into area of the solenoid. Area will be equal to pi r square or pi d square by 4. So, pi d square by 4 or pi r square whatever you take that is the area because it is already clearly written it is a cylindrical tube divided by the NIA by this is length right NIA by length of the conductor. So, there is a length of the conductor we have to write this. So, this will become equal to mu is equal to 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7 multiplied by the number of turns are 400 and this will be 20 into 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 2 whole square that means R square multiplied by this pi is also missing right pi into D square this is what we get this is pi is outside pi D square by 4 or pi r square. This will be divided by length is equal to 100 into 10 to the power of minus 2. So, if you are substituting this, you will get this value as 6.31 milli Henry. So, this way we have to calculate the inductance of a solenoid. I hope the basic concept of what is inductance and how to calculate the inductance of solenoid is completely clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.